Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting up the UK, and um, welcome aboard. Um, if you like the channel, please subscribe, share, like, and um, for those of you who've already done so, thank you very much. Um, what I was going to talk about today is rather unusual. I never thought that working too many hours could result in someone not getting their citizenship. Well, apparently, if you work over the legal limit, your citizenship can be denied, or in this case, it's been postponed for two years. Apparently, this woman, she had three jobs, and she was working a total, I think it was 72, I'm going to read it in a minute, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm sure it was 72. Was it 52? Anyway, over the over the limit of 48 hours, over the legal limit of 48 hours a week, um, she had these three jobs. So she applies for her citizenship and they deny it because they said, you know, she's worked over the legal limit. And I don't know if that's considered a crime, but... Um, they're just not allowed to do it. Now, this took place in France. It's not in the UK. It's not in the USA. It's happened in France. And it's not the first time it's happened either. So I'm going to do my duty. I'm going to read it out to you because you never know. Because some people, they could be doing all kinds of jobs. I remember watching one of these Border Force um, programs on TV. And when you um, are a student here, you, you pay for your student um, course and apparently you're only supposed to work part time or 24 hours or something. I don't know why they stick that limitation on. If you're working legally and you can get the work, why stop someone? Anyway, this guy, he was a minicab driver. So he'd come over, he was doing a course, but he was um, minicabbing at night. And he hadn't told them that he was working. He reckoned he only did a couple of hours, well, less than 30. I think he was allowed to do 30 hours or something. Anyway, I don't know how they found out. I think they tricked the person he was staying with, who said he was working at the minicab place. They then called the minicab office. And um, the minicab office said, yeah, he's working 37 or 38 hours, whatever they said. I think it was 38 hours a, a week. And that constitutes full time. And he's not allowed to do that. So would you believe that guy, he had paid for his course. He had, a, he had a job. He went back to visit um, India. Silly boy, silly boy, silly boy. And um, couldn't come back. Could not come back. So course money gone down the drain, lost his job. I mean, to be honest, you know, there are rules and rules are there for a reason. I mean, they reckon that, you know, when you overwork, it's bad for your health. You can get strokes and stuff like that. I'm going to read it all. Um, so it isn't healthy to overwork. But at the same token, you know, each individual is different. We all know our bodies. And we should know whether or not what we're capable of doing and providing you're not making silly mistakes and providing you're not a doctor who's, who's you know, under the, got people underneath the knife and stuff like that. Or you're doing a driving job, things like that, where you do need rest. You know, some jobs you can um, just literally go from one to the other if they're different. So that's what happened with this one. So um, I don't know what you think about that. Do you think people should be able to work as long as they want? Or do you think there should be a limit? Actually, they're going to be cutting us down soon. They're going to be cutting us down from a five day a week to, I think, a two or three day a week in line with um, other European states. So better make the most of it while you can, folks. Anyway, um, France has rejected an immigrant nurse's application for citizenship on the grounds that she was working too many hours a week in breach of the statutory 35 hour week and strict limits on overtime. So in France, the limit is 35 hours. In the UK, it's 48. 48 hours is the legal limit. If someone chooses to work over that limit, should she be denied citizenship? Well, I don't know. Do you think she should be denied? I think... I think, you know, it's not like she's committed a crime. I, I don't understand why they refuse citizenship just because somebody is working three jobs. 
anyway, um, I know that, you know, when you think about women, say, for example, we do, well, say for me, I do a nine-to-five job. When I was young, when I had kids growing up, I would leave that job and I would go and look after my kids. I'd look after my husband. You know what I mean? So you're on the go all the time. You're working. You have to say you're working different types of jobs, different types of shifts. So you work for the man during the day, nine till five. You go home, you become a mother and then, you know, you become a wife. And, you know, that's constant. And you probably do that for 18 hours a day. So what is the difference? I don't see no difference. Goldman Sachs announced a cap of 17 hours on the working day of the summer interns following the tragic death of a 20-year-old Bank of America Merrill Lynch intern who was found dead in a shower after working 72 hours in a row. Wow, 72 hours. That's like you hardly got any sleep. An inquest found that the cause of death was an epileptic seizure that could have been triggered by his long hours. It was observed that those who work more than 55 hours a week have 33% increased risk of stroke compared with those who work 35 to 40 hours. So there's health risks. The authors hypothesised that long hours may be associated with repetitive triggering of the stress response physical inactivity and a propensity to ignore warning signs and symptoms, all contributing to the increased risk. So I guess if you're on the go all the time, you don't really notice when something, when your body is telling you something's wrong. The results of the study led, led by University College London indicates that employees work late into the evening are at increased risk of suffering a stroke. For British workers in particular, the apparent health risks are alarming since all since full-time employees in the UK work longer hours than their European counterparts. Trade union leaders have long raised concerns about long hours culture in our workplaces, while various studies have challenged the idea that long hours equals higher productivity. Is this media hype to get Play, sorry, is this media hype to set in place shorter hours, less pay, no benefits, increased automation? I stuck that bit in there because, you know, there's always a reason why they start hyping this stuff up. Because when you think about it, they are trying to get us on shorter hours. In, they are. I've heard about them talking about Sunday closing again. You know, we never used to have shops open on Sunday. Apparently, they're going to revert to that at some point. Um, when you do less hours like for people who do less than 14 hours the company doesn't have to pay them any benefits they don't get an annual leave so it works out wonderful for them so you know this big hype about people uh, it's illegal to work over hours you know and you deny somebody citizenship for it i think it's all a part of a, a bigger plan or to make us aware of, or slipping this in, slipping in the fact that, you know, we've got automation to do the work for us now. We don't need you to work all these long hours. And somebody's benefiting, financially benefiting from all those hours. Oh, they don't like that. Anyway, um, the UK full-time workers work longer than the European average. The working time regulation gives workers who work more than six hours a day an entitlement to a 20-minute break away from the desk. If, however, they feel under pressure not to take the time, either due to workload or workplace culture, the legislation may have little value. The French immigration personnel could have discussed whether there were appropriate opportunities for air breaks rather than deny citizenship. Yeah, because, I mean, they've asked her about, she's been honest enough to say she's got three jobs. And that was probably based on, you know, maybe her income. Maybe they said, how come you get all this money? And she's probably had to tell them. Overtime is defined at the time that an employee works that exceeds 40 hours in a week. Although I'm not sure how this works if an individual works for three different companies. Yeah, I wonder how that works. Because that's not technically overtime. Not unless they consider the main job, which is probably 30, 30 40 hours and then everybody else, the other two companies she works for, that might be overtime, I don't know. 
There is nothing inherently legal, illegal about asking employees to work more than the allotted 40 hours a week. There is no legally imposed limit on how long an employee can work. So an employer can require an employee to work 48 hours a week and even fire them if they do not meet that requirement. But there's nothing in writing if the employee wants to work over 48 hours. This is all in favour of the employer. So the employer is saying your employee can't work over 48 hours, but there's nothing to say, oh, supposing the employee wants to work over 48 hours. This is all to protect the employer. An employer isn't allowed to make an employee clock out at the 40 hour mark, but force them to, but force them to keep working overtime off the books. The law is clear that no employer is allowed to accept the benefits of your overtime work knowingly without paying you appropriately. Even if an employer has a rule that doesn't allow you to work 40 hours and you work anyway, they are still required by law to compensate you for the overtime worked. They could institute disciplinary measures against you for breaking work rules, but they'll have to pay you anyway. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to go into all this. I don't want to really do a long one. Um, UK, USA, they only have 14 vacation days. UK, we have 33. Um, for the highly motivated employees want to move the ladder, so they invest the higher amount of hours in their job. High ambitions and their own sense of excellence in the job have led to a growing trend of overwork in employees. I'm sure many of you are working more than 40 hours a week. Recent layoffs have thrust huge amounts of work on employees who got to keep their jobs. In addition, survivors of layoffs are afraid of losing their jobs and are therefore working harder and longer hours to prove their worth. The nurse whose name and nationality have not been made public holds three jobs and averages 59 hours a week. I said 72, so it's 59 hours a week she's doing which the authorities said places her in violation of regulations of working time in France. Her naturalisation has been postponed for two years. The 35-hour rule introduced under a socialist government in 2000 gave France one of the world's shortest working weeks, but it has since been loosened and employees may be permitted to work up to 48 hours a week, including overtime. Sanjay Navi, a lawyer, said immigrants were often denied naturalisation for working too many hours. He says, I've seen similar cases before this. This is not an isolated decision. Mr Navy said he had seen a number of naturalised applications by security guards turned down because they had multiple employers and worked too many hours. I did not know that they could refuse naturalisation, citizenship, just because you work long hours. I never knew that at all. A baker in northern France was fined 3,000, equivalent to 2,700 pounds last year for breaching legal limits on working hours by opening his bakery seven days a week. But I doubt if he was the sole person serving or doing whatever he was doing. Overworking is a major issue according to to the most of the employees. The worst impact of overwork is on health. There have been thousands of cases where overworking caused work-related illnesses. Impacts on health include symptoms like headaches, fatigue, extreme tiredness, regular sleepiness, continuous irritability, and even panic attacks. Finding time is the biggest hurdle in order to have a balanced life. It is neither easy to create balanced life nor to maintain it. Balanced life is desired by every human and it is obtainable. I remember when I used to do care work, I used to look after disabled children. And that kind of work can really um, encourage you to work long hours. There were women there who used to work. They used to just do the day and then they'd sign on for the night shift and they'd come back and they'd, try, they'd get all the overtime. I mean, they used to rake it in. I mean, I, I kind of, 
I feel as though I have a balanced life because I wouldn't like to be in a position where, you know, my family um, is neglected or my spouse is neglected just because I'm working. And yes, the money's nice, but then, you know, you've got that money. You, who, who do you share it with? The husband gets peed off. The children feel neglected. So what is what is the point? So you have to know where to draw the line. For single people, though, they might think, oh, well, I've got nothing to go home to. Some of them who don't have animals to feed or, you know, because for a lot of people, they're now turning to animals for company. But if they've got no animals to feed, they probably think, what's the point of me going home? I'm just going to go home to sleep, so I'm going to work as much as I can. I've got nobody at home waiting for me, and therefore, you know, this is what I intend to do. And there won't be no life, work-life balance in that person's life. And, you know, she, they, she could end up with burnout. Yeah, but even so, having said all of that, I can understand the health implications. I can understand that, but I don't understand why that would be a reason to um, forego citizenship unless they see it as someone breaking the rules. And because you're breaking the rules, they might, it might come under moral turpitude, you know, all that kind of stuff. They have a reason for everything. Anyway, it's only been postponed for two years. So I thought I'd share that with you. Bye for now. Where is my mouse?